before I start my remarks, I would like to take a minute uh, to remember the what was known as Operation Blue Star. Today, in 1984, the Indian Army launched Operation Blue Star, a coordinated assault on Darbar Sahib, popularly known as the Golden Temple, and dozens of other Gurudwaras throughout Punjab. Today, uh, Indian American Muslim Council with others joined Sikh community around the world to pause for a minute to remember this horrific event. I would like to start out by sharing an anecdote that hopefully will uh, illustrate just how deeply the rot of anti-minority hatred has consumed India. Over the past several years, and in fact, since the founding of IMC, our organization has been target of some truly unique insults from the Hindu right wing. We have been labeled as part of an international conspiracy to drag India's image. We have been accused of being anti-Hindu and spreading propaganda. We have been accused of being in cahoots with the government of Pakistan, and we have been accused of being linked to several terrorist organizations. All this harassment simply because we have pushed for India to honor its founding values of pluralism and secularism and uphold the constitutional rights of all Indians. All this harassment simply because we have dared to say that Muslims, Christians, Sikhs, and Dalits, and other minorities are all human too. Unfortunately, a growing number of Hindu Indians have come to believe that Indian minorities do not deserve to be called human. You can imagine then how much worse it is to be a human rights defender in India, where speaking up for the rights of minorities has become criminalized. To quote Dr. Gregory Stanton, the founder and president of Genocide Watch, when nationalism is combined with religion, it becomes deadly. It turns nationalism into a sacred doctrine. Those who do not believe, it, believe in it must be killed. He said, this in the context of analyzing India's descent into fascism and impending genocide against Indian Muslims. Let me be clear that it is not just a fringe minority who have become radicalized against Muslims and Christians and anyone who is dissents. The ideology of Hindu supremacism has poisoned every aspect of Indian democracy, from the central government to schools, to the film industry, to law enforcement agencies, to the justice system. Every Muslim in India is under attack simply because they exist. In the past week alone, Hindu extremists have attacked Muslims through the judiciary, through harassment, and through physical violence. In a blatant disregard for the law itself, a court in Uttar Pradesh, Mathura city claimed that the historic 17th century Shahi Eidgah mosque is not protected by the Places of Worship Act, which makes it illegal for the character of a religious place to be altered. This law was created 30 years ago precisely to ensure that communal tensions are not inflamed over such shockingly baseless claims, which are being pushed by Hindu supremacists through emotion and propaganda rather than facts. The courts, the courts states, Court's statement sets a dangerous precedent, adding fuel to Hindu extremists. Claims that the mosque was illegally constructed on the birthplace of the Hindu deity, Krishna, and should be torn down to build a temple. Shahi Idka and other historic Muslim monuments are in danger of having their history erased and their walls torn down to appease Hindu extremists who have little to no evidence to back their claims. Uttar Pradesh 17th century Gayan Wabi Masjid is already being threatened with bulldozers by Hindu extremists 
who falsely claim that the mask fountain, which is used by Muslims to wash up before prayer, is a Hindu symbol representing the deity Shiva. Delhi's Khutub Minar monument, which is over 800 years old, is being attacked by Hindu extremists who want the structure to be rechristened or renamed with a Hindu name to hide the fact that they were built by Muslim rulers. Not even the 390-year-old Taj Mahal, India's most iconic structure, is safe from Hindu extremist claims that idols are hidden in its sealed rooms. We have seen that an entire generation of Hindu youth has been lost to radicalization. That was made evident by anti-hijab protest held at a Karnataka college this past week, where male and female Hindu students alike protested the fact that their Muslim classmates are defying the high court's discriminatory hijab ban and continuing to wear, wear their hijabs to school. Elsewhere in Karnataka, a Muslim student was refused entry to his college and thrashed by Hindu extremists simply for wearing a skull cap, a headwear commonly worn by Muslim men. Other Muslim essential practices are also being criminalized, including the basic right to prayer. Last week, four Muslim tourists were booked and locked up for hours after offering prayers in a mosque on the premises of the Taj Mahal. All four accused were booked for provoking with intent to cause riots. Despite the fact that there is no prohibition, sorry, my screen froze, prohibiting prayers at the Taj Mahal, just, just a second, please, I lost my place here. We have seen that the generation of youth has been lost to radicalization. That was made evident by anti-hijab protest held at a Karnataka college this past week, where male and female Hindu students alike protested the fact that their Muslim classmates are defying the high court's discriminatory hijab ban and continuing to wear their hijabs to school. Elsewhere in Karnataka, a Muslim student was refused entry to his college and thrashed by Hindu extremists simply for wearing skull cap a headwear, headwear commonly worn by Muslim men. Other Muslim essential practices are also being criminalized, including the basic right to prayer. Politicians make hate speeches and against Muslims with impunity. An official spokesperson for the BJP, the ruling party of India, Nupur Sharma, appeared on a major Indian news channel where she made disparaging and inflammatory remarks about the Quran and Prophet Muhammad while claiming that Muslims are the ones insulting Hinduism. Hate is like pollution. It spreads in the atmosphere, can be contained in a corner or in a section of a society. This anti-Muslim hatred is even impacting non-Muslim Indians. Hindu supremacist Dinesh Kushwala, a BJP worker, was caught on video viciously beating Bhavarlal Jain, a mentally ill elderly Hindu man in Madhya Pradesh state. In a video of the incident, Kush Kushwaha can be heard demanding to know if Jain is a Muslim. Jain died shortly after from his injuries. I would also like to remind you that it was only a few months ago that India's most powerful Hindu supremacist leaders gathered and asked for genocide of Muslims that are 200 million Muslims. We have already begun to see the consequences of allowing these hate mongers to walk free. When Muslims attend, attempted to defend themselves against these attacks, they were jailed for rioting and their homes and shops were bulldozed. Muslim owned homes have now been targeted by demolition in Madhya Pradesh, Assam, Gujarat, and New Delhi, the capital of India, with more states like to follow in their footsteps. All these systematic attacks may appear random, 
but it may well be a strategy to erase Islam itself from India, as Buddhism was mostly erased by the same Hindu mindset in the past. This kind of history can be repeated if good people are busy preventing individual security and their future and remain distant from active participation from speaking up the truth to power and act to reverse this trend of hate and violence and defeat this Hindu nationalism or fascism. This Hindu nationalism had reached the United States over 50 years ago. Now it is seeping into American society right here in our cities, in our politics, in our education system. This ideology now must be rooted out from not just in India, but right here from American society.